Greetings students, in this video we will see about economic analysis of robot. In addition to the technological considerations involved in applications engineering for a robotics project, there is also the economic issue. So will the robot justify itself economically? The economic analysis for any proposed engineering project is of considerable importance in most companies because management usually decides whether to install the project on the basis of this analysis. So to perform the economic analysis of a proposed robot project, certain basic information is needed about the project. So this information which includes the type of project being considered, the cost of the robot installation, the production cycle time, and the savings and benefits resulting from the project. Next we will see what are the types involved in robot installation. So there are two basic categories of robot installations that are commonly encountered. The first one involves a new application. So this is where there is no existing facility. The second situation is the robot installation to replace the current method of operation. The present method typically involves a production operation that is performed manually and the robot would be used somehow to substitute for the human labor. But in either of these situations, certain basic cost information is needed in order to perform the economic analysis. In this, we will see the kinds of cost and operating data that are used to analyze the alternative investment projects. So cost data required for the analysis. So this is used to perform the economic analysis of a robot project which divides into two categories. One is the investment cost and other is the operating cost. So we will see one by one. So first is the investment cost. So in this we have a robot purchase cost. So this is the basic price of the robot equipped from the manufacturer with the proper options that is which is excluding the end effector to perform the application. And next is the engineering cost, the cost of planning and designing engineering staff to install the robot. Next is the installation cost. So this includes the labor and materials needed to prepare the installation site. So that is the provision for utilities, floor preparation, etc. And then next is the special tooling. So this includes the cost of the end effector, parts position and other fixtures and tools required to operate the work cell. And miscellaneous cost, this covers the additional investment cost which is not included by any of these uh, above categories. And which example other equipments which is needed for the cell that will be included in this. And next coming to the operating cost and savings. So here our first one is direct labor cost. So this is associated with the operation of the robot cell. Fringe benefits are usually included in the calculation of the direct labor rate but other uh, overhead cost also are excluded in this. And next is indirect labor cost. So this can be directly allocated to the operation of the robot cell. So this cost uh, includes uh, supervision, setup, programming and other personal cost and also this is not included in any of the category uh, which is already we have seen. And next is the maintenance cost. So this covers the anticipated cost of maintenance and repair for the robot cell. And this involves not only indirect labor but also the materials that is the replacement parts and service calls by the robot manufacturer. And next is utilities. This includes the cost of utilities to operate the robot cell. For example electricity, air pressure or gas. So these are usually minor cost compared to the other one. And next training. So this might be considered to be an investment cost because much of the training required for the installation. So will occur as a first cost of installation. So however this training should be continuing activity and so it is included as an operating cost. The explanation of the previous slide is given here as an hint. So we can go through this one. Next is the life cycle of cash flows. 
So investing in robotics can come with a lot of questions. Is the capital expense going to meet the demand which will face in the future or the maintenance and engineering cost going to be too high to support consistent production and uptime? Are robots adaptable enough to respond to the mix of products, parts and processes which is used to address both the current and future needs? So generally robotics are a highly cash flow positive expenditure in case of large mass manufacturing companies. So how can we manage cost if the task a robot is doing is not repeatable? So at every step of the process one must consider the savings that come with reducing peripheral labor costs like insurance, healthy and safety risks or the need for the specialized equipment required to assess the skilled labor with uh, hazardous and injurious work. And it's also estimated that the full payback of a robot in a variety of labor markets which can be between 2 to 10 years and the service life of a robot can reach up to 25 years in some cases but Ultimately, many of the costs associated with robots can come down to systems, integration and programming. So, which will take up as much as 60 to 80 percentage of the total cost for the installation. And at the same time, robot productivity, uptime and 24 hour production capacity mean that robots can offer a 30 to 40 percent productivity improvement compared to a processes that rely exclusively on the skilled labor. So on the whole, the net annual cash flow will be uh, subtracting operating costs from the revenue. So there are three factors to overcome which makes the industrial robot cash flow even better are uh, the cost of the hardware. So reducing the cost of the hardware and system integration and also the cost of manual programming and program validation for each and every part. So each of the representative parts which compose one third of the upfront cost of a traditional robot. So gaming this cost with the right technology however could uh, reduce both the upfront and ongoing cost of robot and this can subsequently improve cash flow for uh, more firms. There are three methods for analyzing investments and comparing investment alternatives. The one is payback method, second one is equivalent uniform annual cost method and third is return on investment method. So we will see one by one with an example. So first one is the payback method or otherwise payback period method. So this is the duration taken to equal the initial investment and net accumulated cash flow in the development of a robot which is called the uh, payback method or uh, payback period method. So if the net cash annual cash flow are identical to every year then it can be stated as the payback period method is investment cost by net annual cash flow which is uh, and it is denoted as uh, NACF. So when the net annual cash flow is not equal, then I will get this. Having the assumptions that if the net annual cash flow is positive, so revenues will be greater than that of the operating cost. And also all cash flows occur at the end of the year and all the investments are done at the beginning of the year. So this net annual cash flow is calculated at the end of the year. Consider this example. Suppose that the total investment cost is estimated to be $1 lakh for a particular robot project. The total operating cost that is the labor, maintenance and other annual expenses are expected to be $20,000 per year. And the anticipated revenues from the robot installation are $65,000 annually. So it is expected that the robot project will have a service life of 5 years. Determine the payback period that is expected for the investment. So first you have to calculate the net annual cash flow for the robot project. So it is the total revenue, revenues minus the operating cost. So here the revenues is given and the operating cost are 20,000 per year. So totally you will get 45,000. 
and from this you can able to calculate the payback period method so which is your um, investment cost by the net annual cash so you will get 2.22 years which is the payback period which is expected of the investment and disadvantages of this method is it ignores the time value of money and it does not consider the objective of company to derive a certain minimum rate of return from its investments so the second method is equivalent uniform annual cost method so this is uh, shortly written as euac it is used to alter the total cash flows and investments into the equivalent uniform cost over the expected time of developing a robot it is done by employing different uh, interest features that are connected with the calculations of engineering economy so you can see the formula to calculate this annual cost method next an example for euac method so consider the same example in the payback period method so the company uses a 30% marr which is minimum attractive rate of return as a criteria for selecting its investment projects so robot project is expected to have a 5 year service life and that is what we shall use in determining the values for any interest factors required in our calculations so operating cost uh, for the uh, previous example is 20000 and annual revenue is $65000 are already expressed as uniform cash flows initial investment is to be converted to equivalent uniform annual cash value using the capital recovery factor so uh, using uac formally we calculated it as dollar uh, Uh, we substituted the values and we calculated it as dollar three nine four two. So here will which will be resulting uniform annual cost value which is positive. So this robot project is a good investment method. The third method is return on investment method, which is the expansion of ROI. It is used to determine the return ratio of the current project. which is related to the anticipated expenditures and profits if the rate of return is low to the expected cost of a company then the investment made is accepted it is calculated as the percentage of gain from investment minus cost of investment by the cost of investment so this roi is compared with the company's minimum attractive rate of return to determine whether the investment is justified or not and here the uac sum is set to 0 in the left hand side so on the value of interest factors are found which makes the right hand side of equation to 0 so there are some terms defined to calculate the economic analysis example consider let f as a capital investment to purchase a robot which includes its purchasing cost and installation cost next b is the savings in terms of material and labor cost and c denotes the operating and maintenance cost d denotes the depreciation of the robot now the net savings will be um savings in terms of material and labor cost minus operating and maintenance cost minus depreciation of the robot next consider let g with the tax to be paid on the net savings so from which we will be able to calculate the pay, payback period and considering here let i is the modified net savings after the payment of the tax so from which we can able to calculate the rate of return on investment so company decides to purchase the robot if the payback period is less than techno economic life and the rate of return on investment is greater than rate of bank interest so the same thing we will see with an uh, numerical example here the considering the cost and savings associated with the robot installation which is given below 
so here cost of a robot including accessories is 12 lakhs installation cost is 3 lakhs maintenance and operating cost is rupees 20 per hour labor saving is rupees 100 per hour material saving is rupees 15 per hour the shop runs 24 hours in a day so in three shifts and the effective working days in a year are 200 the tax rate of the company is 30 percentage and techno economic life of the robot is expected to be equal to six years determine payback period of the robot and rate of return on investment so we have seen how to calculate the payback period and rate of return on investment so considering first the capital investment f which includes the cost of the robot including the accessories plus the installation cost so totally you will have 15 lakhs in total hours of running of the robot per year is 24 and which is into 200 working days okay so total 4800 saving per year will be labor saving plus the material saving okay so here So labor saving is 100 per hour and into total hours running per hour is 4800 plus material saving is per hour is 15 into total hours of the running of the robot per year will be 4800 so totally you will have 552000 next is maintenance and operating cost per year that is your C parameter C so here 20 per hour into again total hours so 4800 so totally rupees 96000 and techno economic life of the robot here it is given as 6 years so from which we can able to calculate the constant depreciation per year will be the cost of robot including the accessories by the techno economic life of the robot so you will have 2 lakhs now from which you can able to calculate the net savings as a savings in terms of material and labor cost which is 552000 minus operating cost here we have calculated as 96000 and minus the depreciation which is here 2 lakhs so totally net savings will be 256000 so tax to be paid to the government by the company that is here it is given as 30 percentage so you have to calculate the 30 percentage from the net savings which is 76,800 so uh, we have calculated all these things so from which we can able to calculate the calculate the payback period of the robot which is your uh, capital investment F by savings in terms of material and labor cost minus operating and maintenance cost and minus uh, tax to be paid on the net saving so finally this gives you 3.9 years which is less than that of your techno economic life that is your six years now we need to calculate the rate of return on investment so net savings after the payment of tax to be calculated before that which is i which is your modified net savings after the payment of tax which is 0.7 into 2,56,000 so it is 1,79,200 so from which you can able to calculate the rate of return on investment so just 11.95 percentage which is greater than the top rate of bank interest therefore the purchase of the robot is justified by taking loan from the bank thank you